Huawei Mate 10 Pro, Design The Huawei Mate 10 Pro has a close to identical design to the regular Mate 10, which is no bad thing. The design takes the same mixed metal and glass approach as the Galaxy Note 8 or iPhone X. The slightly curved glass back, coupled with the sturdy metal sides and near bezel less front, makes the Pro one of the prettiest phthalates on the market. The slim bezel also means the Pro doesn't feel terribly unwieldy, despite packing a 6-inch screen. Outside of this you'll find all the trimmings expected of a 2017 flagship. On the back, just below the dual like a branded cameras, you'll find a fingerprint scanner, which during my tests proved fast and reliable. At the bottom you'll see the increasingly common USB-C charging port and a speaker which, while not the loudest around, is more than good enough for video calling. Build quality is also excellent. Unlike on cheaper phones the glass back here offers next to no flex and is surprisingly scratch resistant. After accidentally throwing it in a pocket alongside loose chain, the Pro emerged unscathed. The IP67 certification also rang true, with the Pro surviving my attempts to drown it in a kitchen. I still wouldn't trust the glass back to survive a drop onto a hard surface, however. The 128GB of inbuilt storage is also more than big enough for most users, and means the absence of a microSD card slot isn't that big of a deal. My only minor quibble with the phone's design is that, unlike its sibling the Mate 10, the Pro doesn't have a 3.5mm headphone jack. I know I'm fighting a losing battle, as everyone has already jumped on Apple's no 3.5mm bandwagon, but for me and many music fans, the port's absence is still a sticking point. Huawei Mate 10 Pro, Display the big difference between the Mate 10 Pro and the regular Mate 10 is that the Pro has an OLED, not LCD, screen. Specifically the Pro comes with a 6-inch HD plus HDR10 OLED display, while the regular Mate 10 comes with a more basic 5.8-inch Quad HD HDR10 LCD screen. Some people may complain about the seemingly lower resolution, but the truth is that the Pro's 2160 by 1080 pixel count is more than good enough. Even if you try your absolute hardest you're not going to spot individual pixels. The OLED panel is also one of the best on the market at the moment. Unlike Google's Pixel 2 XL, the screen isn't horribly calibrated and, while a smidgen warm, colors generally look nicely vibrant without making the jump into oversaturated territory. Whites aren't as clean as a well-set-up IPS panel, but they're not the dirtiest I've seen on an OLED and are pleasingly free from the yellow or blue shift I see on competing a mold screen phone. Blacks are also nicely inky. Brightness levels are also insanely high and meet the mobile HDR10 standard. However, given the current lack of high dynamic range content available to the Mate 10 Pro, I can't currently comment on HDR performance. On the whole, the Mate 10 Pro's screen is one of the best you'll find at this price point. Huawei Mate 10 Pro, Software Huawei has always struggled with mobile software, thanks to its insistence on using its own inner skin. Traditionally this has warped whatever Android version it's laid over to near unrecognizable levels, making needles UI changes and adding more third-party bloat away or in duplicate tasks than could easily be counted. Despite coming on leaps and bounds, and Huawei having managed to load the Pro with the Google's latest Android 8 Torio software, this problem remains the same on the Mate 10 Pro. Emotion UI still completely reworks key things, like Android settings menu, making it difficult to find the exact option you're looking for. It also removes the app tray from the main menu. Despite a radically reduced amount of bloatware, you'll also still find pointless duplicate applications for things like music calendar and messaging that offer at best equivalent features to Android's native apps.